You are looking at Pennsylvania Hospital. 800 Spruce Street in Philadelphia. This is brick granite with marble trim. 23 bay front, including wings, two and a half, and three stories on raised basement. Hipped roof with circular balustraded light, skylight, on octagonal base, on center section. Gable and hipped roofs with octagonal cupolas on the wings. Marble ground story and six giant pilastras at second and third stories of center section. Round arch entrance with fan light and modified Corinthian frontispiece on center section. Central hall plan with offices and library in the center section and wards in the wings. This is a notable architectural complex whose center building is an outstanding example of the American Adamesque architecture and whose plan influenced later hospital designs. The East Wing was built 1755, the West Wing 1794. The center section was also built around 1794. I'm sorry, center section was altered in 1848. As we walk through, we've taken a look at some original woodwork, original floors, staircases. There's a monument to Ben Franklin who founded the hospital along with Thomas Bond. Thomas Bond is somewhat understated in his importance towards this hospital. Nonetheless, he was very significant in getting it founded. This hospital is so old, the first hospital in the U.S. There are so many stories. This video was intended to give you a flavor for the building, its purpose, its longevity, along with an invitation to come see, take this tour and see this magnificent structure. Pennsylvania Hospital is today a private, nonprofit, 515 bed teaching hospital. It's the first established public hospital, the first surgical amphitheater in the United States, and has the first medical library. There's the front door with original glasswork. Pennsylvania Hospital continues to function today as perhaps one of the best teaching hospitals in the nation, and certainly one of the best hospitals in Philadelphia. The active hospital is just behind this historic property and attached to it. This is one property. We're looking at some historic artifacts that have been collected within the hospital over the generations. There's a fire engine from 1803. We thought this was interesting. This is one of the psychiatric practices they had of isolating somebody and putting a box over their head. Pennsylvania Hospital was groundbreaking in psychiatry, starting with obviously very old world antiquated ways. We're going to make our way into the historic library after we visit an office. Original, original woodwork. The glass in the windows is original. The grandfather clock is a written house clock donated to the hospital.
and a look at this particular room from back in the day. Many paintings adorn this particular museum hospital, significant doctors, contributors, students, artifacts, Let's check out the library. This room, they keep dark because of the age of the books. Maybe a little difficult to see, but what we're looking at now is something that was established in 1762. The first book for the hospital's medical library was donated by John Fawther Gill, a British friend of Franklin's. In 1847, the American Medical Association designated the library as the first, largest, and most important medical library in the United States. In that year, 1847, the library contained 9,000 volumes. The collection now contains over 13,000 volumes dating back to the 15th century, including medical and scientific volumes, as well as books on natural history. The library includes the nation's most complex, complete collection of medical books published between 1750 and 1850. We're looking at more original glass, which is why it has a slight smear to it, and some of these ancient books. Some of the books are written before 1501, when the printing process was invented. We're looking at period furniture as well, and we wonder students sitting in those chairs and what they were thinking of with their limited understanding of medicine. A wheelchair with three wheels, certainly difficult to navigate. Looking at more of this exquisite original woodwork. We're coming up on a plaster model. We were told autopsies were not performed back in colonial days and early federal period times. They thought it was taboo and violated the body. So they would take plaster casts of the corpse and study the plastered cast after the fact. Very interesting. And one wonders what information they were able to gather with such a limited piece of work. So we go up the steps. We're headed to the amphitheater. We've been waiting for this one. The top floor of Pennsylvania Hospital is home to the nation's oldest surgical amphitheater, which served as an operating room from 1804 to 1868. Surgeries were performed on sunny days between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. since there was no electricity at the time. The surgical amphitheater seats 180 and with those standing, up to 300 people might be present during any given surgical operation. We were told that students and doctors sat on the first row of the balcony, and the general public was able to buy tickets for the upper balcony. We have that gorgeous skylight on the ceiling, the only light that was provided. This, of course, was before anesthesia, one was given several options. Whiskey, if you had money, opioids. Or they could hit you on the head with a mallet. Popular surgeries were amputations and the removal of tumors. This is not the original floor, as it would have been covered with sawdust, collecting all the fluids from the various procedures being done. This would have been swept up and kept up so the floor is not original. We look at some of the barbaric tools that are still on display inside this amphitheater. And I wonder if this room could speak. I believe this one would sc 
scream. Everybody coughing. No concept of germs or sterilizing. We were told the rich actually had most of their surgeries performed at home. Who would want to be on such a public display? So as we make our way out the door and take a look at the stairwell and some more woodwork, we just want to invite you to come to Pennsylvania Hospital and take this tour. We're unable to give you all the details and all the stories. Clearly, we have generations and generations of stories of the advancement of medicine. This is still a teaching hospital. They, they literally can tell you everything from the beginning. So we invite you to Philadelphia to take the tour of Pennsylvania Hospital, the nation's first and oldest hospital. Ask questions, hear the stories. If you like this video, please subscribe and learn everything Philadelphia.